See what the wolf man's doing. Rare sighting in the wild here. A glimpse of the rare wolf man putting shoes on. What the hell are you doing? What are you fixing to do? I put it on some of your holy socks that don't fit on my feet. And I hope they're clean. They felt a little crusty. They're clean. I had to hook, man, hook Wolfman up with the socks today because he is going to be using those. Well, Chuck you, baby. Is that not supposed to be in the laces from underneath? I don't know. Chuck you. He's going to be riding that hay bike behind him. Everybody was so worried about him losing his damn toe. <laughs> and Chuck you was taking stuff like that personal. It was like, hey, Wolfman. Well, he's being proactive, apparently. Yes. Chuck, you appreciate you. you being a preventing yeah. toe loss here at Wolf Tick Videos. I have to loosen this. See if my big old foot will fit in it. From this to that. Don't mess yes. with the flip flops. Yeah. Chuck, you, thank you so much. Get off my hand. Put my love. Wolf Tick Nation, thank you guys for tuning in to once again another Wolf Tick Videos episode. Now guys, on today's episode, if you have been following along this Maroka M4 fiasco that we've been going through, right? You actually told me that you were being careful and you didn't, you barely even turned it. And I watched the footage, you're on crack. It's official. We've done the bleed, we've done the pad replacement, and now we've got the Axum DP Wara Top, beautiful Mount Nebo State Park, and we are fixing to take this bike down Hayes Creek Run. We're gonna bed these brakes in. We're gonna see if we did a proper bleed job or something good enough to slow me down. And also, we're gonna see if these new pads, the hard-headed rams that Chris H ever had to shed sent us, we're gonna see if those things actually make a difference with these rotors today. So uh, once you guys strap in, get ready to join us, because it's gonna be an awesome episode. I can't wait to take this thing down Hayes Creek. Let's go ahead and hit it, guys. All right, guys, here we go, Mount Nebo. We're gonna go down this uh, this huge drop here. We're gonna drop some elevation. We're gonna do it on the road because Hayes Creek is down another level. So we're gonna bed these brakes in. I'm gonna give it a few uh, stops on the front end, on the back end, see how they feel. Beautiful view, look at all this stuff out here. Golly, I hope that back brake stops me. Ace. Thank you so much for sending in a new lever, man. So far, it feels okay, if you guys can see it. It feels good. That front lever feels a lot better. Um, the stopping power, that is, not the lever itself. We're gonna be talking about doing the real-time review, really breaking these uh, levers down and the whole pad and brake feel on Hayes Creek Run after we get done breaking, um, bending these pads in. All right, just kind of slowing me down with the rear, then transferring over to the front rear then the front here's uh, one of the lookouts here at mount nebo okay i think that's good i don't know if that's my brakes i smell or the old car's brakes i smell uh front feels good i think we're set we're bedded in all right buddy it got dark all of a sudden i think a storm's coming in all right, guys, let's hit Hayes Creek Run, the Maroka M4, see if we can beat this storm. It is dark out now. Let's do this real-time review. Here we go. Chris H, again, thank you so much, man. And Ace, helping save the day. Oh, big brother, Kevin Hodges. I got your gloves on, man, your Fox gloves. I'm loving them. They're feeling good on the hands. All right, here we go. See how these puppies do. Man, nice and smooth. Now we're gonna talk about these brakes as a whole, then we'll talk about the pads, okay? Remember we did a little bit on the initial impressions. Oh, we got a little squirrel in front of me. You guys see the chipmunk thing? All right, we're gonna get a look down the uh, initial impressions we kind of talked about them, but now since they're pre-bled, or re-bled, I guess, talk about them a little bit. Now the lever design on these brakes, I love them. They really wrap around your fingers. And something I want to tell everybody since we've done the GT Aggressor Pro upgrade update video and we were talking about the uh, the levers on the zooms, everybody was saying, well, man, you really need to get those levers. You need to uh, 
you need to bring them in a little bit and move your shifter. What's cool about these guys is I can move them in and leave my shifter where it's at because the levers are so short. So uh, they're like, hey, one finger only, use one finger on me. So uh, we're gonna give the Morocos a try with one finger only. But they do feel comfortable. And remember guys, you can't adjust anything but the throw on these guys. Yeah, this trail's a little rough today. All right, now the hard-headed ram pads. You can get those for around $32, I believe. Another berm here. You can get them for around $32. Do you guys think, that, think that's budget? In your guys' opinion, will you pay $32 for a four piston pad? We'll put the percentages up there for you so you can see exactly what you're getting, but so far so good. All right, now back to the Marocas. The levers, I'm liking the feel of them. The front one is strong enough to want to put you over the bar. I mean, there's no modulation with the front whew, whatsoever. Golly, somebody was asking the other day, Arkansas, if we, what kind of trails do we have? Uh, we got a lot of damn rock gardens. Look at this one coming up. So one finger, enough to slow you down, put you over the bars with the front. Uh, the rear, there's a lot of modulation too. Here we go. Woo -hoo -hoo! A lot of modulation with the rear, but it's definitely not biting as much as that front one is. And that's kind of a normal thing. That's more of a normal thing with these budget brakes, man. Um, the amount of bite that you get. Now it is improved. Whoa. Whoa. It is improved <laughs> with these new pads. The front is like, I mean, you're not even squeezing at 50% and it's wanting to put you over the bars. The rear, on the other hand, I can feel it biting on the rotor. All right, we got some mud down here. I can feel that rear biting on the rotor. But what's nice is with my one finger here, it's not hitting my knuckle at all. So that's a big improvement with these brakes. Before coming from the top all the way down to the bottom, they were, uh, I was experiencing a lot of squish in the lever itself. But so far, uh, so good, or so far, uh, not too bad with the amount of squish. So I think that bleed helped out a little bit. And I know we're not professionals, right? But uh, that little bleed that we did, yeah, made an improvement, man. Now let's talk about the uh, the fade. We've been going for a while here. Woo! Okay, lock them up, definitely. One finger is strong enough for the front. I'm going to say two finger is necessary for the back. All right, so I'm going to have to start two finger, but I'm going to try and stick one finger this whole trail. Uh, now the amount of fade, since we've been going for a little bit now, it's pretty much the same. There's no fade with the pads like there normally is. Like, I think the brakes start getting hot and I'm using the crap out of them right now. I think the brakes start getting hot over a period of time and you have to squeeze more and more. And that mixed with the crappy sponginess sometimes that you get with budget brakes, it just makes for not a good combo. And right now, surprisingly, I'm not getting either from uh, the pads having any experience with, me with the fade or with the calipers or the uh, rotors or the levers, I mean, uh, with the sponginess. So that's nice. Slow me down really quick here. Ugh. Shoulder workout. All that rowing. Okay. Okay, now let's take a look at these rotors. So this rear rotor here, I can feel some heat coming off of it with gloves on. There's a lot of heat coming off of that guy. And this is the 180 snail that Chris H sent us. But man, those, um, those pads are doing a really good job. And you can see back here, there's really not a lot of... Um, big gap there for air to flow through but they're doing a decent job stopping let's look at the front one so there's no discoloration and that's a 203 it's massive those things are definitely not warm at all to the touch we've been using the crap and i mainly i'm using the crap out of the front i mainly use my front finger when i'm braking anyway so not terrible at all so here's the stopping point right i like it because it grips that finger right there's the stopping point but what's nice is this is your wall and it's far, far away enough from that grip where it's not hitting my knuckle. But I'm feeling it start to bite here and all the way through until I get to that wall in the rear. The front, on the other hand, we go here and it stops. There is no modulation. Now, I could mess with that throw, but even then, there's no pad, no pad, bam, and it hits it. No pad, no pad, and it hits that rotor. So there is that wall right there. And it's really short. It's directly to it. 
And you're gonna experience that a little bit with the rear, um, having that little bit of play and modulation, but man, that's not the greatest. A little different and takes some getting used to. All right, now these trails are a little bit muddy in that rear caliper. We got a little feature here. Ah, that rear caliper, it's got a little bit of mud, a little bit of water on there. So we'll see how these things do. Um, now let's talk about, when we get up to speed, let's talk about, see if we got any pad movement. I really wasn't paying attention. And that's something that will really trip you out, especially if you just got done putting a headset in. <laughs> I've had that in the past where we've done some uh, work on headsets and I really wasn't aware of the brakes, didn't really pay a lot of attention to them. And there was so much pad movement in there, I thought something was loose in my headset. It happened with the R door not long ago. And when I'm doing my ABS right now, with these brakes, I don't feel a lot of pad movement. That's good. Really good. Got some flow in here. Lose my accident sight while back with the Axum. All right. Good. Just enough stopping power. I have to kind of squeeze down a little hard with the rear. As I said earlier, I'm way more of a front brake kind of guy. A little wet again. I'm way more of a front brake kind of guy and I'm trying to kind of go back to the rear a little bit. My hands get a little wore out as much squeezing I'm gonna have to do to really get me slowed down. Just due to the fact that it doesn't really feel strong to me. Ooh, yeah. God, I love this 29er. All right, about to lock that front up right now if you guys heard that. Hardly takes any squeeze. So the front is actually feeling like a four piston. No, I think I got a flat. I'm hearing a flat guys. No, no. Well crap, I've got a 27.5 uh, tube. Damn it, I'm gonna have to fix this thing. The review was going so good. This is a 27.5 inch tube. See if we can fit in a 29er. I don't know where I got the flat at. Don't even start everybody with your you gotta get tubeless. I will say these tires are not the greatest. I love the looks of them and the tan sidewall is great, but they are not all that. Okay, this has got to be like a 26 or something. This thing is tiny. What in the world are we doing here? It's a 27.5 by 2.3. All right, we're fitting in there, but eesh. now we'll get me down the mountain. So we're back at it and it looks like Oh, I missed my big turn that they redid for me. It looks like a 27.5 will fit on a 29er. Doesn't fit the greatest, but it'll work. Okay. All right. Yeah, so definitely the brake pads are a huge improvement. No fading whatsoever. They, uh, they feel really good. They're grabbing good. No pad movement. So I'm excited about that, Chris, and the Wolf Tick Nation. You guys are excited about that as well. Please give this video a thumbs up. Okay. Now, let's see how the rest of this rear feels. I'm gonna be getting on the rear a lot. The front has proven itself. All right, so that rear brake, man, it's not, it just, I don't know. I, I, uh, I just can't feel the, um, the strength in it. It's kind of a letdown. It's not strong at all. The front feels like a four piston. If you were to put me on this bike and I didn't know what kind of brakes this thing had, and you were to ask me after, hey, what, what would you ride on the back? Was that two piston or four? I'd be like, well, the, the front felt like a four, the rear felt like a cheap old, like a two piston, man. All right. Let's see if we can do a softie. Yeah. Yeah, I had no, I had no, uh, no, no worries on the stopping ability because that. Let's talk about these brakes, shall we, guys? That was the uh, Maroka M4, uh, four piston, very budget, eighty-four dollar brake, real-time review. 
And I we've also were, got the... It was 75. They, they may have been 75. It was 75. You I keep know. going up every time you talk about the it. The $97 Marocas, man. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, you can check the affiliate links below and the hard-headed Ram brake pads. Uh, so first thing I want to say, Dad, is it turns out a 27.5 can fit in a 29er. Uh, okay. Yeah, can fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we established up yeah. there. Those tires suck. Yeah, these just, tires aren't the greatest. They're the v, v tires. V tires were super cheap. I love the way they look, but they're just yeah. not the strongest. Looks wise, they're cool. They suck. Yeah. Anyway, okay, let's talk about these. Uh, let's talk about the pads first. How was the brake fade on them? Uh, brake fade was excellent. No matter how, I mean, I use the crap out of these things right now, at least the whole first three quarters, and the brake fade was was excellent. It didn't didn't feel any different from the top of the mountain all the way down to the bottom. I'm going down the mountain, I was really strong handed on both levers, and I was doing one fingers the entire time. Strong so, handed with one finger, huh? Yeah, one fingered man. They were begging wow. for one finger, and I gave it to them, and they're, they were they're fine. begging for one finger. Pads made a huge difference out there, and for thirty two ninety nine, answer the question: Is that budget? Is it not for pads? I would pay that for. That's for front and rear. Right? Front and rear. Yeah. That's for four pads. Yeah. I would. I mean, it's not. I wouldn't say it's super cheap, but it's decent. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's super cheap, but I would. I would pay that, knowing the differences with the old ones that came with the original set and this set that Chris sent to us. So I would. I would pay the difference because the grab is there it's chris h to you yeah, chris h at the shed um the grab is there the bite is there right off the bat and then it's all up to you with the modulation the problem going back to the marocas is you've got modulation on the rear it's just you don't have crap up on the front man it's all or nothing up there i have yet to find a real budget brakes but but you know set of brakes that the rear on hydraulic brakes that the rear feels that great on yeah I, for some reason they just never to me uh the the, the shimano mt420s mt200s and some tectros we've had all felt pretty good on the rear other than that on the on on the hydraulic brakes the cheap ones all the front ones seem to be okay most they seem of them to be good but the rears never seem to be good uh, very good ride very comfortable gloves um old kevin hodges uh Appreciate that so much, man. Um, gloves are comfortable. Appreciate the lever from old um, Ace from Cali. Thank you so much for uh, the whole bleed fiasco, man. You saved the day. Chris H, not only did he send the uh, snail rotors a while back, guys, the floating rotors, but hell, he sent us those new pads. So thank you so much, Chris, over at the shed. You guys can check him out in the uh, links below. But man, that was another Wolf Dick Videos real time review. Uh, guys, turn notifications on because we're going to be doing a, I think it's time to do the break. Uh, budget break shootout, if you will. You know, we've got some selections to choose from now. We've been talking about that no, in the last gonna bleed be a video. Disaster. It's going to be a disaster, but yeah. it might uh, might enlighten you a little bit. It's a very scientific channel. It might be an entertaining disaster. Yeah, it might be. But uh, guys, appreciate you watching, man. We will catch you on the next one. If you guys like to support the channel, support build, support videos like this, please check out the uh, Buy Us Cup of Coffee link below. All that goes right back into this channel and helping, helping travel and do stuff like this. And uh, if you guys want even more, you guys can check out our Patreon channel where we've got some exclusive builds going on if you can handle the language thank you yes you're welcome all right guys we will catch you on the next one um happy riding to you